dear student friends in the last lecture we have studied theorems on open sets in a metric space now in this lecture we will prove uh, one more theorem on open sets and then uh, we are going to define closed set and uh, we shall see some examples of closed set also now this is uh, our next theorem which is uh, theorem 6 on open sets the theorem states that let m1 row 1 and m2 row 2 be metric spaces and let f is a function from m1 to m2 then f is continuous on m1 if and only if f inverse of g is open in m1 whenever g is open in m2 this is the meaning of the theorem or uh, uh, briefly the meaning is f is continuous if and only if the inverse image of every open set is open suppose f is a function from one metric space m1 on to other metric space m2 this is the function m the theorem states that this function is continuous if and only if that there is a two way condition necessary and sufficient if f inverse g is open in m1 whenever g is open in m2 that means g is open set in m2 and whenever g is open set in m2 its inverse image which will be in m1 the inverse image will be this one f inverse of g that is open so this is the inverse image of g and if g is open in m2 its inverse image is also open in m2 this is a strong condition for function to be continuous the function is continuous then this is satisfied and vice versa now we shall prove it or that's why it is in short f is continuous if and only if inverse image of every open set is open now we will prove this theorem first uh, we shall assume f is continuous continuous at point uh, say continuous on m1 suppose f is continuous on m1 what we have to prove uh, f inverse uh, g is open in m1 and whenever g is open in m2 let uh, g be open in m2 g be open in m2 and uh, to prove f inverse g is open in m1 we have to show that a open ball around x if x belongs to g then an open ball around x is contained in f inverse g so we have to show we have to show that for every x belongs to g there is an open ball around x of radius r which is contained in f inverse of g so this is what we have to show that means x is a point in uh, uh, c for every x uh, uh, belongs to uh, g, we have considered it is in g uh, g inverse not g x belongs to g inverse for every x belongs to g inverse there is an open ball uh, b of radius r about x which is containing f inverse g so x is this point here and we have to show there is an open ball around this x of radius r which is again contained in f inverse g so this is what we have to show now further what we shall consider is a x belongs to f inverse g so this implies the image of x under f will be some uh, element y that is belongs to g this implies y is equal to f of x under f y is f of x and that belongs to g now g is open that we have written 
yeah. GB open and therefore an open ball around Y of radius S is entirely contained in G. So this implies the open ball, there is a open ball, there is B, open ball of radius Y around S contained in G. The reason for this is since G is open. G is open in F. Now, uh, F is continuous, we are shown. F is continuous on M1. And uh, there is a uh, uh, theorem we have written earlier about uh, continuous function. Uh, the function is continuous if and only if an open ball around this uh, Y will contain an open ball around X in M1. So that is uh, the condition of continuous function. So since F is continuous, inverse image inverse image of this open ball contains an open ball around X. Inverse image of uh, open ball of radius S around Y contains so this, uh, this open ball about S contains BXR open ball about X and thus what uh, actually we have is first part you see. Uh, here uh, it is um, B of uh, open ball of radius S about S is contained in G. So therefore uh, we have F inverse of G contain is uh, contains it contains inverse image it contains inverse image of uh, this open ball that is F inverse of open ball B of radius S around Y and this contains B open ball of radius R about X. Now you see this F inverse of G contains the inverse image of this G that is open ball. This is the open ball its inverse image is this one this is inverse image of this open ball and that inverse image contains this open ball that is uh, which is open ball around R. This is the condition of uh, continuity that we have written in earlier uh, theorem. So a function is continuous if uh, inverse image of every open ball a function is actually a function is continuous about a point A if uh, every inverse image of uh, uh, f of A contains an open ball around A instead of uh, y here it, we can assume it as f of x inverse image of uh, the open ball around f of x contains an open ball around x and that is what we have written its inverse image of g falls in this m1 and that contains inverse image of uh, this open ball is written as this one b that is a uh, inverse image of inverse of b of uh, y s and that open uh, inverse image of that open ball contains this open ball which is B of X and R and thus or this contains means this is a subset so that is a open ball of radius R about X is contained in F inverse of G and this is what we have to prove so we have to prove that for X belongs to F inverse of G there is uh, open ball B of radius R around X which is contained in F inverse G and this proves the first part. So that is uh, F inverse G is open in M1 then G is uh, whenever G is open. So this, in, this proves F inverse G is open. So therefore F inverse G is open in M1 and that completes the uh, for the first part. Now we shall consider the second. 
what is the second part that is converse part suppose uh, every uh, suppose uh, f inverse g is open in m1 whenever g is open in m that we shall start now second part now suppose f inverse g is open converse we are proving first we have proved f is continuous then we have proved this now assume this and prove f is continuous f inverse g is open whenever g is open in m2 this uh, we shall assume uh, f inverse g is open in m1 whenever g is open in m2 that we shall assume now to prove f is continuous we have to prove f is continuous on m1 so to prove f is continuous on m1 now what is meaning of f is continuous on m1 it is continuous at every point in m1 and therefore we shall take a point in m1 and prove that f is continuous at that point so it is sufficient is sufficient to prove yap is prove that yap is continuous at any arbitrary point random point any arbitrary point a belongs to yam so this is what we have to prove now we will consider here the point as a a is a point in m1 and its image uh, will be a copy which will be in m2 now the uh, this this image uh, we will consider an open ball around f of a of radius epsilon this is and we will denote this as uh, actually this is b uh, open ball of uh, the radius epsilon about yeah and uh, what we have to prove when uh, for a continuous function the inverse image of this open ball around fa will contain an open ball around a that we have to prove now for that purpose uh, we shall consider let that this uh, be denoted by script b is equal to the open ball of radius epsilon let uh, be a, an open ball open ball about it in yam then we know that open ball is open set then this script b this open ball we have denoted by single letter uh, many notations we are using and you should uh, be familiar uh, with this notation so this is b then b is an open set open set in m open ball are open sets that we have proved open set in m and what is our assumption if uh, g is open in m2 if its inverse image is open in m1 so therefore its inverse image is open in m1 by assumption yap inverse of b script b is open in m1 so this is uh, actually we have denoted by b script b and its inverse image is in this m1 so this is yf inverse of script b and this is open now a belongs to in that because uh, uh, inverse image of f a is a and a must be in this uh, open set a belongs to yf inverse of b and it is a open it is open so therefore 
an open uh, ball around A must be contained in F inverse uh, B. Therefore, there is an open ball. around A of radius delta which is contained in F inverse of B. So that is open ball around A of radius delta. This is and it is contained in F inverse B. And this proves that F is continuous. So this is the condition of continuity. When we say a function is continuous at point A, if an open ball around f of a, its inverse image must contain an open ball around a. So inverse image of a, a open ball around f of a, its inverse image contains an open ball around a. And this proves that f is continuous. Continuous at a and belongs to M1. So A is in M1 and hence this completes the proof of the theorem. We have proved both the parts. So this completes the proof. So thus in open sets we have proved a few uh, theorems and uh, the theorem uh, important result that means any uh, union, arbitrary union of open set is open finite intersection of uh, open set is open and an interval, open interval in R1 can be written as union of countable number of uh, open intervals which are mutually disjoint and this is our last result we have proved. Function is continuous if inverse image of an open set is again open set then the function is continuous. So these are important results we have proved about open sets. Now we shall study closed sets. And before defining closed set, we will define limit point, limit point of a set and then we will define uh, closed set. So this is our next uh, section which is closed sets. First we are going to define limit point of a set. Let E be a subset of a matrix space M. Yeah. A point X belongs to M is called a limit point. Limit point of E if there is a sequence xn of points of E which converges to x. So this is the definition of limit point. It is called uh, a limit point of E. So it is to be corrected. Limit and limit point are different. Limit point of E. The E is a subset of uh, matrix space M. Uh, so that means uh, if, uh, if uh, this is a matrix space M, and then E will be a subset of uh, M. And a limit point uh, C that is not necessary, it must be in E. It must be in, maybe in E or maybe outside E. So this is a point X belongs to E. Not necessary always outside E, maybe inside or outside E. E is called a limit point of E if there is a sequence Xn. There is a sequence Xn which converges towards X. That is X1, X2, etc. and that approaches towards X. Then X is called the limit point of E. So uh, we shall consider the set further. One more notation we shall define. The set E bar of all limit points. of E is called 
is called the closure of ink. So this is one more definition we have uh, written. That means we have considered here limit point and the notation for closure. Limit point uh, is a point if uh, we, we say x is a limit point uh, and that belongs to m but that is limit point of uh, e. So if there is a sequence xn of points of e, points of e that converges to x then x is called limit point of e and second the set of all limit points collection of all limit points is called closure of e and the notation is e bar so e, uh, e, uh, limit points the set of all limit points of e bar is called closure of e now we shall have a corollary that means what is the relation between e and e bar that states if e is a um, uh, met, a subset of a matrix space M. We state that corollary, a short result after this uh, defining this two. If E is a subset, subset of a matrix space, then E is subset of E bar. So this is the result. E contains closure of E. And the proof is simple. Let X belongs to E. Then there is a sequence. And this X is always uh, the limit point. A single point, if you consider every single point in a set is always limit point of that set. Because we can easily construct a sequence which converges to X and the sequence can be considered as x, x, x. The, then the sequence the sequence whose points are all x x, x, x converges to x obvious constant sequence and it converges to x and therefore, x, uh, the, the by definition, when we say x is limit point, if there is a sequence xn which converges to uh, x, then it is limit point. So for x, this sequence it converges to x, and therefore x is limit point of e. X is a limit point of e. x is limit point of E means it belongs to E closure, closure of E uh, or E bar. So because E bar is the set of uh, points um, which contain all limit points of E. Therefore, x belongs to E bar. And thus, for every x belongs to E, x belongs to E bar means every element in this E is in E bar means this is subset of E bar. And hence, E subset of E bar. So this is the result that uh, we have proved. Now we shall consider next result as a theorem. And then we will prove the closed set. Or uh, you see, uh, we will state that as a theorem now uh, in uh, next uh, theorem as theorem number seven in continuation. Let E be a subset of a matrix space M. Now a point, then a point, or then the point. X belongs to Yam is a limit point. Limit point of E if and only if. and only every open ball B of 
x and r contains at least one point of this is our theorem now the result is important see it uh, states the stronger relation for limit point when a point is said to be a limit point the condition is a limit point if and only if again there is a two way relation implies and implied by if and only if every open ball uh, b of x comma r means open ball of radius r about x contains at least one point of e that is the meaning of uh, that then the, the that is meaning of actually the limit point or limit point implies this now we shall prove the result one thing is to be noted limit points are also called cluster point or accumulation point and actually what the meaning of limit point is there is a sequence xn there is there must be a sequence xn uh, which converges to x or when we say like this if uh, the points x1 x2 x3 and so on they approaches towards x and as n increases the points becomes closer and closer to x and here the more points will be there of the sequence x n etc when n becomes infinite and if you consider an open ball around x then it will contain or it must contain at least one point of this sequence then and only then it will be going to be a limit of this sequence that is the meaning of this theorem every open ball of uh, radius r around x contains at least one point of this sequence then it will be a limit point now first we will assume x belongs to m is a limit point of e let x belongs to m be a limit point as a first part let x be a, uh, x belongs to m be a limit point of e and because x is a limit point of e there is a sequence xn by definition of limit point then there is a sequence sequence xn of points of e that converges to x that means xn converges to x and we have to prove that any open every open ball b of x comma r contains at least one point of e then the open ball b x comma r will contain a point uh, of xn c will contain xn if row of xn and x is less than r so that is only we have to consider if xn is a uh, point of uh, e then that will be in this open ball if the distance between xn and x is less than r so that means if uh, this is the radius r and if xn and x is within radius r then xn will be in open ball and thus therefore b a the open ball b of radius r around x contains a point of e and this proves the first part if x is limit point then every open ball b of x comma r uh, contains a point of e now the converse part suppose conversely suppose every open ball b of x r suppose every open ball b of x and r contain contains a point a point of e 
then for any n belongs to i the open ball of radius 1 by n this open ball will contains a point xn belonging to e so by, by the condition that every open ball contains a point of e so therefore this is an open ball it will contain some point xn in e but what that implies xn is in this open ball means therefore the distance of xn and x is less than 1 by n rho of xn and x is less than 1 by n and now what this shows the distance between xn and xn xn and x can be made as small as n increases so if n increases this number it becomes very small and that means this is approaching xn is approaching towards x so this shows that by the definition of limit distance between xn and x is becoming smaller and smaller as n increases this becomes smaller and smaller and this shows that the sequence xn of points of uh, xn belongs to e of points in e converges to x and hence x is the limit point of e it is a limit point of e so this is what we wanted to prove if every open ball contains uh, at least one point of e then x is x belongs to m is a limit point of e this completes the proof Now with this theorem, uh, see, we will uh, consider the definition of closed set after proving the result. Now we will consider definition of closed set. Let E be a subset of a metric space M We say that E is a close subset of M Of e. We have defined closure of E are here. And uh, what is closure of E? Uh, set of all limit points of E. And so E is equal to the set of all limit points of E means E must contain all its limit points. That is, in other words, E is closed if E contains all its limit points so this is the definition of a closed set now uh, see we have earlier proved that E is subset of E bar or closure of E that, that is a corollary we have proved now when we shall say these will be equal for equality E bar must also be a subset of E and we need only to prove E bar is subset of E, then E will be closed. So we know that E is subset of E bar. This is proved earlier. And therefore, to prove E is closed, it is enough to prove or sufficient to prove. E bar is a subset of E. Or 
closure of E is subset of E. So this is the condition for closed set. Or uh, the definition is E is closed if uh, E contains all its limit points. Or that means E is equal to closure of E. Now uh, see we have we have E is uh, contained in E bar, but uh, E bar is will not be contained always contained in E. Now. Uh, for ex uh, examples of for examples of uh, closed sets, we will consider. First is every closed interval. contained in R1 is a closed set of R1 or closed subset of R1. Every closed interval is a closed subset of R1. Or in R1, the meaning is simple, closed subsets are or closed intervals are closed sets. For example, this interval 1, 3 is a closed set, closed set in R1 because uh, it contains all its limit points but on the other hand if you consider the open interval this one three then it is not closed it is open set that's why the word itself specifies the intervals which are closed and which are open so this is closed because it is a closed interval it contains all its limit points and uh, this is open because uh, this uh, will not contain all its limit points for example, if you consider the sequence uh, 1 minus uh, 1 by n, then that sequence uh, uh, see, will tend towards uh, see, uh, or 1, 1 plus 1 by n, we will consider 1 plus 1 by n. Then this uh, is a sequence of points in uh, 1 and 3. And what about the limit of uh, this sequence? As uh, n tends to infinity, this tends to 0 and its limit is 1. So this is the limit, but this one is not in this set. End points in open interval, end points are not uh, this in, in this interval. And therefore the interval is called open, its ends are open. And here, this is closed means its end points are, are there inside the interval. So therefore it is closed. Or if you consider this uh, example, uh, simple example as uh, interval 0 and 1. Now we have a sequence. 1 by n is a sequence of points in this interval, uh, say A. But uh, 0 is zero is a limit point of uh, A. Then it tends to 0 or is a sequence in A and this tends to 0. But 0 does not belong to A. 0 does not belong to A and that means this uh, set does not contain all its limit points. This is a limit point, 0 is a limit point but 0 is not in A. Therefore this set is not closed, is not closed and to make it closed we have to only consider its closed interval. Now it, uh, 0 is a uh, limit point and it is uh, there in this closed set. 1 is limit point and it is there in this closed set. So every closed interval is closed subset of R1. Every open interval is open subset of R1. That are simplest examples of open and closed sets. Now another example can be considered as say uh, singleton set. Uh, see uh, this uh, set is set X is a closed set of for every metric M X belongs to M where M is metric So 
x uh, single term set or one point set is always closed in any metric. So that is the meaning. And this example we have seen earlier because uh, this uh, is a sequence x x x x points and that converts this to x. So x is the limit point and that is there in this. So single term set are always closed in any metric uh, set, uh, any metric space that we, we shall have to note. And third, if um, A belongs to R, discrete metric space, then, then the set A is, now it is both open and closed. Why? In R, we have seen earlier it is open, open set because uh, this contains this is actually equal to the open ball, open ball of radius one uh, around A, about A, and uh, this con this is contained in R D. So therefore, every open ball containing A is in R D, and therefore it is open. And why it is closed? Because a sequence can be considered as A A A. See, this is closed. Single term sets are closed. So therefore, it is closed. So this is both open and closed in R. So this is an example which is the set open as well as closed. And there are half open intervals. Next example can be considered as the half open interval. So we are considering example and counter example. These are examples of closed set. The, this is uh, example of uh, closed and open. The half open interval, say, may, may be considered as uh, zero and half. Any uh, can be considered. Is neither open nor closed. subset of R1. So it is neither. So because half is not in this uh, interval. And if you consider a sequence of points which approaches towards half, then inside this interval, then uh, the half will be limit point, but it is not in this interval. So therefore it is not closed. And why not it is uh, open? Because if you consider any open ball around O, then that does not lie entirely in R1. So this is uh, 0 and this is half. So 0 is uh, there in this interval. But if you construct an open ball around 0, part of this open ball on the left side of 0 does not lie in the set. And therefore it is not open. And not closed because this half is a limit point of this set and does not belong to the set. So this is half open interval or uh, neither open nor close. So these are a uh, few examples of uh, closed sets and the remaining part we will continue next time. Thank you.